Coming up, a Valdosta man is arrested for stealing a vehicle from a local gas station. And the Bell family has chosen to drop libel charges against Ebony Magazine in relation to the Kendrick Johnson case. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Alexis Johnson. And I'm Caitlin Redford. A Valdosta man was arrested yesterday for possession of a large amount of marijuana delivered to his home. 29-year-old Vendrick Dawson was the person who was intended to receive the drugs upon their delivery to his home. Police said there were two packages of marijuana with an approximate weight of 6.4 pounds and 3.5 pounds. Officers said the drug had a street value of $88,000. Dawson is currently being held at Lowndes County Jail with pending warrants of possession of marijuana with intent to sale to distribute and the first degree forgery. An arrest was made on Sunday for two robberies that occurred in Valdosta on September 12th. One of the suspects is still at large. For more on the story, here's News Valdosta's Ian Krasansky. 33-year-old Alfred Woods was arrested Sunday by the U.S. Marshal Service in Kansas City, Missouri. Woods was arrested on outstanding warrants of armed robbery of the MS Food Mart and the Bemis uh, GNC store in Valdosta, Georgia. Police are still looking for his accomplice, a 37-year-old Richard Walton, for the connection in the armed robberies. Pol Valdosta Police Department asked anyone who knows this guy's whereabouts to contact the police immediately. I'm Ian Kristansky with News Valdosta. Rick and Karen Bell have dismissed their $5 million libel suit against Ebony Magazine. Between 2000, August 2013 and April 2014, the magazine posted a series of articles that connected their sons to the death of Kendrick Johnson. Johnson was found dead last year at Lowndes High School in a gym mat. Although the magazine used pseudonyms, it was evident that the Bell's sons were the suspects. Since then, the parents claim their sons have received several threats, although nobody was charged with the death. The parents say that they will file a similar lawsuit in six months. A Ford F-150 was stolen yesterday morning around 5 a.m. from a flash food market on Ashley Street. The owner of the vehicle left his truck running while he went inside the store, and when it, it was gone, it was gone upon his return. The vehicle was later stopped and located in Volusia County, Florida, a few hours later at 10.30 a.m. An arrest warrant was obtained on 23-year-old Jamarca Manson and an extradition hearing will be held before Manson's return to Valdosta to be charged for a felony theft by taking motor vehicle. Kelly Gisson Danner will be put to death today by the state of Georgia. She has been incarcerated for nearly two decades for the murder of her husband, Doug. Authorities said she planned the murder with her lover, Gregory Owens, intending to get a $10,000 life insurance policy and an $84,000 house. Gisson Danner says she's found God and she is doing great things now. Her death has been postponed twice already, but the Northern District of Georgia has denied restraining her order against execution. The city of Valdosta is giving citizens the chance to meet candidates for political offices. More on this story and others when we come back. So stay with us. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. 
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to News Valdosta. A meeting about the new Valdosta High School has been scheduled for next month. The new Valdosta High School construction schedules and procedures will be reviewed during a community meeting next month. JCI Parish, the construction management firm for the new facility, will host the meeting at 5.30 p.m. October 27th at the Horn Learning Center on 930 Old Statenville Road. The new high school will be located at the corner of Park Avenue and Inner Perimeter Road. Lowndes Middle School hosted a breakfast for their community partners in education this past Thursday to celebrate the start of the school year. The school staff has been trying hard to understand the challenges in raising a middle school student. According to the school's principal, Bill Haskins, the interaction with the parents, business owners, and the Lowndes staff is great with many positive things happening at the school. The Valdosta Lounge Parks and Recreation Authority is in need of volunteers. The VLPRA needs people to coach basketball, soccer, and softball, as well as volunteers for this year, Olympics, and other events next month. Do you plan on voting this November but still need to register? Citizens who have not registered to vote have until this Monday, October 5th, to register if they have plans to vote in this November's upcoming elections. Citizens may register in person at the Lowndes County Board of Elections office or online at the Lowndes County website. The Valdosta Lounge Chamber of Commerce will host a Meet the Candidates Forum tonight at 5.30 p.m. at the Valdosta City Hall Annex Building. This will allow the community to meet candidates for local, state, and federal offices. Citizens will hear the candidates' platforms and form educated opinions on their voting tactics for elections in November. The forum is free and open to the public. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll look at today's weather. So stay with us. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right-of-way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys did know? Did you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. Welcome back to News About Austin. Now let's take a look at the weather with Luke Alves. Luke, what's in the forecast? Thanks, Caitlin. For today's forecast, we're looking at a high to be around 84 degrees with a humidity level at 82%. There will also be a 60% chance of rain. Tonight, you may need a raincoat because it will be 72 degrees with scattered thunderstorms. Be sure to grab an umbrella and try to drive while it's raining. For tomorrow's forecast, we're looking at a high of 84 degrees with a 20% chance of rain, which could lead to stray showers and thunderstorms, so be sure to grab a jacket. Today's UV index is high hitting 7 on the index scale out of 11. Be sure to put on SPF 30 if you work outdoors and seek shade during the midday hours. Those with allergies will be pleased with today's very low pollen count of 0.8. With it being that low, there will be no need to take your medication today. That is all I have about the weather today. Back to you ladies. 
When we come back, Casey Gordon has our local sports report. Stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies show the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back to News Valasta. And now it's time for your local sports report. Casey, what's going on? As the regular season comes to an end, the Valdosta High softball team will play their last game against the Tift County Blue Devils. Tift County defeated the Wildcats 13-1 the last time these teams met up. The first pitch of this senior night game will be thrown at 5.30. The Georgia Christian General softball team will be on the road facing the Tift Area Academy Panthers this afternoon in a doubleheader. The first game will start at 5.30 and the second will follow at 7.00. The Generals are currently ranked 120th in the state, while the Panthers are ranked 220th. The Lowndes County Cheerleaders hosted their annual competition that draws in teams from all over the state. For more on the contest, here's News Valdosta's Jessica Pope. It's only the second week in competition cheerleading season here in the state of Georgia and Lowndes County High School is hosting the ninth annual Southern Spirit Showdown. Multiple teams from all over the South Georgia are here to compete this weekend. Lowndes County High School's competition cheerleaders are hosting it so they will not be competing. However, other region teams like Tiff County, Colquitt County and Valdosta City Schools will all be here competing. Here's more on this great event. The day was filled with lots of cheering, stunting, dancing, and tumbling. Each team came and showed off their very best two and a half minute performance. There were 12 teams in the middle school division, which started earlier in the day. There were a total of 10 teams who competed in the varsity level competition. Each team had two and a half minutes to show the judges exactly what they had been working on all season. For many teams, this was their first competition of the season. It was their first time to show off their routine, their first time to get feedback from the judges, and their first time getting a trophy. There were a few stumbles, there were a few falls, but each team performed to the best of their abilities. They should each be very proud of the way they performed. For more on her team's performance, here's Tiff County High School's competition cheerleading head coach, Courtney Clark. I'm just so excited. These girls work so hard. We have put in some, a lot of hours, a lot of hard work, a lot of crying, a lot of hard work, and it paid off. And I'm so excited. Dallas County coach was my coach, so that's even better. And that's a wrap here at the 9th Annual Southern Spirit Showdown at Lowndes County High School. Congratulations to all our winners, especially the 6A winners, Tiff County High School. For all things Lowndes High Sports, for News Valdosta, I'm Jessica Pope. The Valwood Valiance girls varsity volleyball team will play at Georgia Christian this afternoon at 5. The last time these two teams met was earlier this season when Valwood hosted Georgia Christian and won 3-0. This game will be a non-conference game, but the Valiants look to keep their 10-game winning streak going when they play. The girls team will then play at Tiff County tomorrow at 4.30 in their first game of the two-game series in the season. 
Well, that's a wrap on sports. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Casey. Coming up next, we'll have more information about a cooking class hosted by the Turner Center for the Arts. So don't go away. We'll be right back. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. And we're back with the News Valdosta. The Turner Center for the Arts is hosting an art resale benefit to, lo for, to benefit local art education programs. The organization is seeking donations of previously treasured artwork for its Arts Guild Upscale Art Resale. The Upscale Art Resale is Thursday through Saturday and will benefit education in the arts by funding programs provided at the Turner Art Center. At the arts, the art sale will begin with a special preview on Thursday from 7 to 9 with a $10 admissions free fee and hors d'oeuvres are provided. The Havens Women's Shelter of Valdosta is screening the film It Happened Here at Valdosta State University on October 13th at 6 p.m. in the UC Cypress Room. The film is a documentary that focuses on sexual assault on campuses. The event will feature speakers from the Haven Sexual Assault Center and the VSU Criminal Justice Department. The event is sponsored by VSU, VSU's health promotions, and it's free to the public. And that's it for our program today. Thank you for watching News Valdosta. I'm Alexis Johnson. And I'm Caitlin Redford. We'll see you tomorrow.